Hey everyone, welcome everyone to Microsoft 365 Virtual Marathon. Thank you for attending and we hope you are having a great, great conference. Uh, I would like to introduce Norm Young. Norm, Norm will be presenting a session titled A50 Minute Digital Transformation. You can take it here from Norm and uh, I will be muting myself. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening to you wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for coming to my session on a 50 minute digital transformation. There's so many amazing sessions being offered throughout the Microsoft 365 virtual marathon that uh, I'm really am pleased that you've taken time out to come see my session. And the virtual marathon is brought to us by the Microsoft 365 Collaboration Conference being held on March 23rd to 25th, 2021 at the MGM Grand Resort in Las Vegas, Nevada. And thank you to all of our generous sponsors, Persificent, CoreView, Avpoint, Affirma, Knowledge Worker Components, Valo, Swoop, Social Analytics, Pointfire, Tigraph. Oh, I know those guys. We use that stuff at work. It's pretty awesome. And Cybersoft. My name is Norm Young. I'm from St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. You'll be forgiven for not knowing where St. Catharines is. But to give you a reference point, I am 15 minutes from Niagara Falls, which I'm sure most of you have heard of, and about an hour away from Toronto. I'm currently working as a data architect at Brock University. And what that really means is that I manage the Power BI program at the university. And I also manage the collaboration space, which is SharePoint and Teams and Yammer. My most interesting achievement? Well, it's probably this. It's probably my MVP award that I was lucky enough to receive in February. <clears throat> The people that know me will know that I struggle with push pull doors. So to get any award is a big deal. There's no trophy rooms in my house. Uh, there never has been. I've only gotten really one major award in my life and it's the MVP award. Um, it's special to me and I believe that it's uh, something that uh, the people in this session and at this conference can understand that um, we're all part of one technical community, regardless of the platform or tool sets that we use. And it's nice to be in our community together and it's a great opportunity to share back. So that is definitely my most interesting achievement. Even though I am a data architect, my favorite topics tend to be SharePoint. Anything with a list and Power Automate really pique my interest. I'll never say that a SharePoint list is a database, but it sure does remind me of my time as a database administrator. And I do like managing data, making it available for users in a centralized location, and also adding value through that automation. So those tend to be my favorite things lately. There is a raffle. The conference is giving away three Oculus Quest all-in-one devices. So please make a point of visiting the vendor's booth, watch the sessions, watch the videos, and submit your answers to get the raffle. And also please consider donating to the following charity relief funds, the United Way, and the International Medical Corps. These are extraordinary times and they're, they're putting us in positions where we've never been before. So if you're able to give, we'll appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will tell you something about me and hopefully why it makes sense that you're listening to me in this session. Uh, I've been in IT for 20 years. Some of you will remember the Y2K bug. That's when I was hired. 
I came right out of college and started working at General Motors as a database administrator for 10 years. I've got sick of manufacturing and went to higher education and have spent the last 10 years in that space from managing ERPs to doing business intelligence and now into Office 365 on the collaboration front. Like I mentioned, I'm also an MVP and I'm very proud to be in that community. <clears throat> I'm also a community contributor. Uh, I live in St. Catharines, which is not a, a large uh, city or a large uh, metropolis area. So it's not that easy for me to get to local user group sessions and things of that nature, but I do give back. I contribute in the Microsoft tech community and help others the way that uh, I was helped when I was started. I also do something called the Microsoft Community Docs and also try to help out at the local, uh, well, it's not really local, the, the Toronto SharePoint Saturday events and things like that. And finally, I am an Office 365 evangelist. And what I mean by that is I just see so much value in the platform. It fills this large space between ERP and large applications where you can bring so much productivity and collaboration and that platform can be the glue that brings all of those other working experiences together. Now, <clears throat> today I am talking about a digital transformation, mostly for business process that processes that have been left behind by large ERP or application implementations. I see this time and time again at my work. <clears throat> Excuse me. The university that I work at, we have ERP systems, very similar to what you have in your place, I would imagine. And the process to implement them and to understand the fits and the gaps brings forward like 90% of the, the workforce into a new modern experience. But there's still that 10% that are running items on paper. They are they were too small and insignificant to be included in an ERP implementation. And it's those areas that I'm finding time and time again that I can bring SharePoint and Power Automate to the table to bring value to their working lives. So what we're talking about today are some real examples consolidated into a single example that we'll work through as a demo that has a, what was a paper base that went to Excel and then now we'll take that from that one user um, experience and we will move them into something more modern. And so <clears throat> literally in the last 12 months I've had two or three scenarios where a single person has been managing some type of agreement or exchange program information between other schools and it's all been done from an excel file or a paper sheet on their desktop or their desktop computer they're the only person managing it they are a single point of failure their computer is also a single point of failure when that person is out of the office nothing gets done Unfortunately, these same people have other things to do and items have slipped, renewals have gone to the wayside and been missed. This is what we're going to try and address. Our solution will be based on SharePoint, a SharePoint list and the Power Automate flow. This will be all out of the box, all configuration, this will not be a custom developed solution. This will be something that is a custom configured solution. There will be no technical debt with what we create today. And in the end, we will have empowered our users. We have added value and we'll connect them to the technology that we provided to them by centralizing their resources and trying to automate some of the mundane tasks that they were doing before. If you would like to connect with me, you can find me at normyoung.ca. That's my blog site. You can find me on LinkedIn at norm-young or on Twitter at stormin underscore three zero. I would love to connect. 
I'm really hoping that you can come away from my session with two key points. If you remember anything, please remember the next two slides. SharePoint and Power Automate are better together. We've seen in the last week at MS Build that the investment in LIST continues to grow. LIST will become its own application with more features and functionality promised in the very near future. Lists are great for storing and collaborating on business data for our teams. When combined with all the dozens of Power Automate triggers and actions, lists become a legitimate solution for IT pros and, and citizen developers. SharePoint and Power Automate are better together. The second message that I want to make sure you take away from this session is when there is no app for that, you SharePoint and Power Automate as a lightweight solution platform. When business processes are left behind from ERP or large application implementations. And to be clear, I'm not saying that lists are databases. They should not be used for highly complex workloads. You are not going to start sending your manufacturing or banking transactions into a list and expect high performance. You are not going to make a multi-dimensional related table structure like you would in SQL Server out of a list. But they can be used and should be used when users and business process have opportunities to add value through centralization and automation. <clears throat> so there are three key points that I want you to take away from this session as well that I hope will help you with your own digital transformation projects. Key point number one is to use all of the tools in your toolbox to empower your users. I don't mean throwing everything at them from Office 365. Rather, I'm saying use every tool at your disposal to bring value to your customers sooner than later. I might be a data guy and like Power BI. I might be a SharePoint guy and like to do everything in a list. But if I can use one of the other tools at my disposal in Office 365 to bring value to the customer sooner than later, I will and I should. We're going to jump into one of three demos. And in these demos, we are going to be building up our solution. And to complement that first point of using all of the tools in our toolbox to empower our users, we'll keep the following principles top of mind during our solution build. We won't put the tool in front of the problem. We will use Office 365 groups and Power Automate to be the glue that binds those various Office 365 applications together into a single solution. And we will use a simplicity of design to guide us when we are creating these solutions. And we'll look at using Microsoft Excel, Office 365, and SharePoint. So I'm going to stop the presentation at this point and share my desktop. I have our artifact from our user, and it is an Excel spreadsheet. What I like about getting Excel spreadsheets from users and converting them to SharePoint lists and other solutions is that they usually reflect the business process. 
sometimes they will take things for granted. But for the most part, they know the business process better than I ever will. And so when I have received this spreadsheet of the different universities and the exchange programs that they have, I know that for the most part, it reflects the process. In my real world example, I know that there have been issues with agreements slipping in the past. They were not aware of when things were expired and they never had an opportunity to interject themselves into the process to say that an agreement was going to expire. So we will take this base list, make sure it's suitable to get into SharePoint by cleaning up the data and exporting it to Excel. We'll let Excel do the work to export it to SharePoint. We won't handcraft this thing because there's no need to. We have the tools for that. And then we will add columns and other attributes into the list to make sure that it reflects the constraints that they have in the solution. So one of the first things that you must do is to make sure that the data is clean. And I'll simply do that by formatting this as a table. And I will look for any anomalies in the data simply. Now I can see that grad has been used and graduate programs have been used. In my data warehouse days, we would be using ETL jobs to do this, but I don't need to. I'm just going to look at the data because it's small scale in the Excel, Excel spreadsheet and clean it up. So that's clean. So what we're trying to do is simply have clean data coming into our solution. And we see another one where UG has been used instead of undergraduate programs. So that column is clean. Um, the dates look reasonable. The end date is fine. The signatory, that's dummied information. I'm just using a single user account. The duration, they all look to have consistent values. They're either three or five students, balance, inbound, outbound, these numbers look reasonable. Uh, look at country, because these are things that will later serve as lookup fields. So we want to have data consistency. And I'm looking through the list, and well, I don't think Milan is a country, and well, neither Spanish. So let's clean those up. Spanish, where'd Milan go? I think what they tried to say is Spain and Milan is in Italy. Clear that out. And now let's look at the cities. Those look good to me. I'm going to save my data. And I could go to SharePoint. I could create a list that looks like this and then try and use some other tool to import it, but I can just do this from Excel. So why not use it? Why not bring value to the customer sooner than later? But before I do that, I need a container in Office 365 to put it in. And at this time, I will use an Office 365 group, which will also have a SharePoint site. So let me reduce that size. Let me open up this. So this is my Office 365 tenant. I'm going to go into SharePoint. I'm going to create a new site. And this will be a team site. And I'm going to call this Demo 50 MDT, that's available. I'm going to click next and this will finish up. 
and it's done. And here's our site. I'm going to copy the web URL and jump back into Excel. I'm clicking on table design, and then I'm going to use the export function in Excel. I'm going to export the table to a SharePoint list. I will put in the site URL that I just copied, and I will put in a list name of Exchange. These are all fine. They don't really mean anything to SharePoint. They just come in the way they come in. If we stopped here, we would have fixed one problem for our users. We would have centralized and modernized that information. So when our scenarios users who's managing this process from their desktop is on vacation and the others cannot assist, We've just surfaced that information to a centralized location. Many of us will take this for granted, but a number of the users at my institution, they don't know what a cloud is. They don't know what SharePoint is. They think it's something out there that others do and they don't need to do it in order to worry about it. This is a major upgrade and it took us seconds. So the table was successfully published, and now I'm going to click the link to view it. And I'll also close Excel at this point. And there it is. We simply exported that business data from Excel into a centralized location. This is one big step forward, and it was not high tech. This is something that you and your business users can definitely do. It does not require heavy IT involvement. But when I come to an out of the box SharePoint site and I think about what my users think is going to be the experience, I think this is overwhelming for them. As simple as this site is, a new user who's never been in SharePoint or the cloud experience is going to find this overwhelming. So one of the things that I like to do and that we do at my work is to get rid of all of the junk and only give them what they need. So to that end, I will just simply remove all of these unnecessary web parts. They're unnecessary today. They might be necessary tomorrow, but today, I'm worried about getting my users in with the least amount of friction. And I am going to add a button, a simple little button on the screen that will direct my, my users to the exchange list in the easiest possible way. And we're going to call the button exchange and it's going to point to the exchange list. I'm not doing anything high tech here. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to remove all barriers for the users. So that's done. And I will give them a very simple welcome message so they understand where they are and why they're here. Yeah, thanks for that. And I think we'll just uh, give it a few colors to make it stand out. My users come to the site and what they see is a simple button and a message. I will remove all of these unnecessary items on the left hand side because all I'm trying to do is give them what they need and only what they need for now. This is it. This is our user's new digital home. This is not high tech. This has added immediate value to our users. 
So I'm going to hop back into my presentation now. So what did we do? We used Excel for data validation and to create the list. We did not put the tool in front of the program of the problem, excuse me. We used an Office 365 group as our user's new digital home. Our Office 365 group and later in the demo, Power Automate, will be the glue that binds our solution together. We remove the clutter from the SharePoint site to give the users the easiest possible access to their tools. We use the simplicity of design when creating the solution to decrease the delivery time and increase user adoption. Key point number two, add value to your users through the centralization and automation of resources and solution. That's a mouthful, and I hope that this vintage image can convey the message that I'm trying to deliver. Bring everything to the users so they can do their work with less effort. Automate what you can so we're not getting into the mundane. We will get them into one location on the same page and then find opportunities to add value to their work. So reinforcing our key point number two, to add value to your users through the centralization and automation of resources and solutions, we will take the time to learn the business process, to understand their pain points and add value where we can. Our users new digital home will start with SharePoint and will connect all of our current and future solutions to the site. As our users adopt to technology, we will continue to grow their digital home with them. Today, it, it's a SharePoint site. Tomorrow, if it's warranted for the team, we can move to something new like Teams, but it will be what makes sense for our users and their comfort with technology. And this next demo, we will add new columns, new data types and apply some column formatting to reflect the constraints and the pain points that we know from the business process. We will add simple views and filtering and show tools like exporting to Excel to show how people can have some type of uh, on-demand ad hoc, very simple analysis into their data. We will help them get better organized so they can understand the renewals by using Planner. We will bring help to the site by using something called Microsoft Learning Pathways, which is an amazing solution from Microsoft that brings help to the site that can be customized to suit your users and their needs. And finally, we will create a new Yammer group that will give direct support to the users and also grow their knowledge and retain it within the solution. Oops, excuse me. So let's hop into the next demo. First thing that I want to do, I'm going to refresh this. There we go, that looks better. So here we are, this is our list. This is a very small feature that adds so much value to so many users. In the top right hand corner, you will see expand content. And when you do that, you can get the whole screen back now to see all of the content. It doesn't sound like much, but it really does add value when users are on small monitors with wide lists. 
first thing I'm going to do is look at the exchange type. And if I click new, I will see that these small icons, I'll zoom in so you can see, exchange type is set as a string. I also see that signatory is set as a string. I'm going to want to change some of these columns around country and city are set as strings. I'm going to want to have things more of a choice column. So to do that, I'm going to edit the column settings. I'm going to change that from a single line of text to choice. And I should have done that through list settings. So I'll do that now. Exchange type. And you'll see why I made the change at the last second here. Doing it on the, the front end of a list does not inherit the, uh, the values that are in the list already. When I'm in the, the classic way of editing a column and I select it from single line of text to choice, it will find the choices that I need and plug them in for me. I don't want any default values and I will click OK. I'm going to go back to my list. Right, and I am going to add a new column called status. And this will be a choice field. The purpose of this column is to let us know where the agreement sits. Is it active or is it expired? And the what we don't have is an owner of the agreement. We have a signatory, and what that means is that someone is going to be the person that signs off for the agreement. But what we don't have now that our user has gone to a team-based model is the ability to assign renewals or agreements to other users. So we'll add an owner field. And that will be a person or a group, and we'll click Save. But <clears throat> We need to do some backfill. We need to update some of this data. So I'm going to go into Quick Edit, and I'm going to start with status, and I'm just going to say those are active. And it's very much like Excel at this point, which is another great reason to use lists for business users. Most people know how to use Excel, and these features are familiar. So in this case, I'm just going to say that this person is the owner. I've populated it once and I'll drag it down for now. This might not be easy to accomplish when you have a very large list, but for now, it's a really quick and easy way to backfill data. So our signatory, if you remember, when we click new, that is a person column. Oh, sorry, a text column. Where'd it go? There it is. And there's no opportunities for automation in that way. You can't convert a string column to a person column, so you have to create a new one. So in this case, we'll create a new one called signatory new. And we'll go back into Quick Edit. Copy this over and copy this down. There we go, that's resolving. And we'll exit. We'll delete the old one. We don't need that anymore. And we will rename this column simply to have some consistency.
Okay, so we see that in the list, the per the the user, the business process needs to calculate total students. Um, it is a number field, but there's an opportunity to add value here. Instead of that person using a calculator or or a pen and paper to to figure out what the the outbound inbound numbers are, we'll just create a new calculated column for them. So we will delete this column because we don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to go into list settings and create a new column this way because I'm doing a calculated column and they don't tend to work that well in the front end. And this is going to be called total students. This is calculated. And we're going to use a simple formula We're inbound plus outbound equals the total. I don't expect our users to know this on day one, but this is not high tech. And so now we have total students. It got created over here, but I can just simply drag and drop. And this is one of the new features that came to SharePoint in the last years. I've reordered it, it saved the view. I didn't have to do multiple steps to do that. We also see that there's a balance and in the business process, they like to know if they're up or down versus students away at a school or in at the school. So again, I'm going to delete this. It's not needed in its current.
Can someone please tell me if I'm online? Share the slide. Now you are live. Thank you so much. Everyone, I apologize for the internet issues that I was having. The point that I was trying to get to was to clean up the list to have a set of columns that could be repeated. And I was going to use JSON column formatting and hopefully you can see it on my screen right now. So what I've done is I use the out of the box column formatting features. And I'll show you how this looks, but I won't recreate it because I've lost too much time and I apologize for that. Uh, I go to format status column, conditional formatting, manage rules. And in this case, I simply set the rule to say if status is equal to expired, give it a gray background with bold red text. This is an out of the box experience. In the last year, it's gone from using JSON code, which is quite lengthy to this out of the box experience. And it's it's impressive and it adds the value of letting my users come to the page, look at that status and say, crap, I have an expired one. I can action that. I've draw, visually drawn them in to that field to know that they have something to do. My users are also keen on balance. So I've used JSON formatting again to give it almost a dashboard type of view where it says I'm down minus seven or I'm up two. And the idea is I'm using color, I'm using icons to draw them to that. Also, let me come out of the expand view. And while I was offline, you are live. Sorry for the latency, everyone, but this is what we're seeing. I've added the Microsoft Learning Pathways to the site, so I've brought help to the users. I've brought Microsoft Planner to the site and created a planner group for them to help them optimize their work. And I've added Yammer a Yammer group where they can ask their questions and get answers quickly from myself and the support team, but more importantly, they can keep the answers and they can grow that information. So if I were to click on learning pathways, we come to the site and it's all custom training and it's all available for them. You might have your own help resources in company, but in some situations, you should use the Microsoft content because you might just be reinventing the wheel. I go to the planner link and we will see this planner group that we created for them. It will help them simplify their management. Oh, come on, Internet, you can do it. I'll go back and the Yammer group as well. It seems like there's lots of latency and I imagine it's just on my end. It's surprising because uh, my two kids and my wife are still in bed and they're not streaming four or five different devices at the same time. So I'm I'm not sure what's happening here, folks, but I apologize for that. So I am going to hop back into the presentation, but please know that what we've done is brought value. So let me start the slideshow once again. So what did we do? We added status and owner columns to show the current state of the agreement and assign ownership to the renewal process. We updated some text columns to choice, allowing for consistent data entry. Switching to a person column gives us opportunities to add automation using Power Automate. We also created views used for filtering and to provide basic counts and quick access to ad hoc information. We understood the business process and found opportunities to add value. We continued to build out our user's new digital home by adding planner so our users can better manage their renewals and their other workloads. And we brought help to the site, giving self-help options to the owners. We created a hub for teamwork by creating their connected solutions. Our digital home is centralized in a place that will work for our users today. It's not overwhelming. It only has the options our users need today. And tomorrow we can move to another platform like Teams and have our solutions presented as tabs. 
Key point number three, connect users to technology by eliminating their mundane and manual, manual tasks. Not everyone likes change or sees the value in working in new ways or with new people and with new tools. In some ways, we have to sell this technology to the users. We have to show them the value that we are adding. By doing so, we can connect them to our solutions and the technology. And the bottom line is, we must add value to our users' working lives. Oops, sorry about that. So, to reinforce key point number three, connecting users to technology by eliminating their mundane and manual tasks, we will add a new Yammer. We've already added the new Yammer group to provide a direct line of support. So, as the adoption grows, the need for direct support will reduce. Using Yammer as a knowledge community will help retain the organizational knowledge and empower the users of our solution. We will use Power Automate to identify and make agreements expired. We will send out email agreements to owners 30 days out from expiration to allow them a chance to renew before the deadline. And we'll let Power Automate do the remembering and the updating. And finally, we will document our new solution and showcase its value so future users can see for themselves what value looks like. And this ultimately will drive adoption by reducing the cell. So in the demo, we'll be using Power Automate to set reminders and expiration. We'll showcase our SVO solution and we will go from there. Now, I'm aware that because of our technical difficulties that we are running very low on time. I don't know if we can do the full Power Automate demo. Actually, so we have two minutes left. OK, so I'm going to show you the Power Automate solution. If it will let me. Man. So I'm going into Power Automate and I'm going to look at my flows. I won't have the opportunity to build up the new one because I only have a few minutes left. And the latency and, and the response time here is just painful. So I apologize for this. Unbelievable. I don't know if you'll believe me or not, but I do have a pretty good internet package. I'm not on dial up or anything silly like that, so I can't really explain what's happening. But these are extraordinary times, and um, I imagine that my internet service provider is just not uh, keeping up with the load. So this is what the final flow would look like. I'm using a reoccurrence as a trigger. And every day I'm going to connect to my exchange list and look for those items that are expired. I'm using the SharePoint action called get items. I will point it at my site and my list, but I will use the advanced options let me zoom in here so you can see what's happening. I want to find anything with an end date that is less than or equal to now. So if I hop back into my list, this is the end date. I'm looking for something that is already expired. And we can see Feb 1, January 1. So when this runs, it's going to retrieve those items. And at that point, I'm asking it to look at the list and then update it to expired. Once that's completed, these columns get expired and they inherit the, um, the view formatting. And then I come in and I get a reminder date variable 
And that also goes out and gets the items again for exchange. But this time I'm using an, an end date that is today plus 30 days. And that at that point, I will send an email to the owner saying, you have uh, items expiring in 30 days. This is their opportunity to intervene. And the last thing I do is to say, hey, in my notes field, we've emailed this person so the others are aware of it. I mean, I know I'm out of time. Let me conclude again by apologizing. I have no control over my internet quality, so I apologize. If you do want to know more about SharePoint, please visit the SharePoint blog site. You'll learn the best practices, news trends directly from the SharePoint team. If you want to get inspired, definitely visit the SharePoint lookbook site. This is the best of what is possible with SharePoint, and it has an amazing provisioning engine in, so you can send their sample and demo sites to your own tenants. Get involved. If you're starting out with SharePoint and you don't know where to start, use the Microsoft 365 Community Connect site to learn best practices from the people that are practicing SharePoint. And if you want to get involved, join the PMP M365 Community Docs. Finally, again, if you'd like to connect, here's my info. It's been an absolute pleasure being here. I apologize for the technical glitches, and I really hope that the rest of the conference goes well for you. And thank you so much for taking time. Thank you so much now for the for the event. So I'm just you can disable your sharing that we can move further to the next speaker. Thank you.